When you play football in the NFL, it's kind of obvious that you gotta give yourself 100% to the process. It's so intense. But for me, it's not only when I play football, it's, it's also with my foundation, with medicine, critical care. I really try to give myself 100% to everything that I do. I'm always looking for that kind of adrenaline rush when I do everything. To some extent, it kind of become a problem because I got trouble just, you know, chilling at home. I gotta stay active, I gotta move, I gotta be on the run all the time. My goal and my ambition was to be the first ever football player in the NFL to graduate in medicine from a prestigious university like McGill. What was so exciting about that project was to push the boundary of what was possible in regards to student athlete. Just plain and simple, how do you do it? So many people told me when I was younger, like, you're gonna have to choose. You can be dirty. Laurent Duvernet Tardif, the joueur de ligne des Chiefs de Kansas City, and donc maintenant officiellement, Dr. Laurent Duvernet Tardif. Every year there are people that start a career in the NFL, and every year there's people that start residency in medicine. But not every year there's an NFL player who also finish a doctorate in medicine. Are your teammates now calling you doctor? Yeah, I think it's getting a little bit of a trend right now, and, uh, and I kind of like it, you know? I think it's, uh, it sounds right. There's so many people that told me in my life, you're going to have to choose. You cannot do both. You cannot do both medicine and football at the same time. And every time I had to make sacrifice in order to, you know, train in the morning before my rounds or, or do overnight shift in order to be able to balance my football career at the same time. Tellement de la synthèse de beaucoup d'efforts puis d'un long chemin. C'est des moments qui sont extrêmement émouvants en fait, puis ouais, je pleure très facilement. <laughs> I was doing it for me, but also to prove everybody that they were wrong. High school for me was kind of the first real experience in terms of football. Notre mot de la journée, c'est quoi? Domination. What I really liked about the sport at that point was that everybody was kind of pushing in the same direction. What was really rewarding for me was that ultimate vision of winning as a team. Before the NFL draft in 2014, Sasha, my agent, told me at some point, you know what, we're gonna invite all 32 teams to come for a pro day in Montreal. And I was like, yeah, right. You really think they're gonna come? At that time, Laurent was a medical school student at McGill. I was working with an NFL agent in the States trying to help him get drafted. And we were discussing it, and we came to the conclusion that the best way to get him the visibility he needed in front of NFL scouts was to hold a pro day. In Quebec, it had never been done before. So we decided to hold it, and Laurent was the sole participant. Well, guess what? There were 19 that show up in Montreal in the middle of the winter. <laughs> All I had to do was to perform well on the field, show them that I was able to run a 40 under five seconds, bench press more than 30 reps, and show them that I was able to jump 30 inch in my vertical, show them that I was able to broad jump more than nine feet. I really felt at that point like I had everything in my control. What was funny about that whole pre-draft experience was that nobody went through that before in Canada, so I didn't know what to expect. Next thing you know, after the pro day, I'm getting phone calls to like fly in San Francisco, fly in Buffalo, Green Bay, Kansas City for pre-draft visit. It was nice because at that point I was like, oh my God, maybe I got a chance of getting drafted. Finished up their draft by drafting a Canadian, Laurent Duvernay, Duvernay Tardif. And he, by the way, he's got some ability, that kid. Uh, you won't be disappointed. That's it! Yeah. Let's go! 
My first game in the NFL was against the Texans and both Will Ford and JJ Watt were playing. And I was pretty stressed and that feeling of walking into an enemy stadium uh, with a crowd of like 100,000 people just yelling at you and you kind of start moving the chain as a team, running the ball, passing the ball. And ultimately scoring a touchdown. It, it's really an incredible feeling. And then the, the whole stadium kind of go quiet for a little bit. And you're like, oh my God, it's, it's that feeling of being 11 guys on the field against 100,000 people. Winning as a team on an NFL football field was really addicting for me. The normal medical school curriculum is four years. But with my situation in football, I did three years really intensively. And then for the past five years, I've done three to four months every off season. In order to be able to graduate in May 2018, I really had to pass that big board exam. And in order to pass that big board exam, Basically, I had to review eight years' worth of material in two months and then pass an exam of eight hours. HIV, everybody gets a screen once. And you do it through an ELISA. So for me, that was kind of a challenge. Je got un point cinq fois, ça va plus vite. <laughs> so that whole stretch of the spring of 2018 was probably one of the most intense of my life. T'as-tu... Je peux te poser deux questions sur euh, les trucs d'éthique et d'épidémie? Oui. Ça fait drôle de d'étudier ça. On a tellement... Euh, <rire> While I was studying for the biggest exam of my life, there was that feeling of, you know, giving everything you got for that specific exam, that specific moment. But at the same time, in the back of my head, there was that stress of being in football shape in order to go back to Kansas City and train. With Coach Reed, we have kind of an agreement where I'm accountable for my shape and my training and kind of blend in with the rest of the guys for OTAs. At the beginning, I tried to study in Montreal in my apartment, but I quickly realized that there were way too many distractions. And in order to focus and assimilate all that knowledge, I went to a little cottage for two weeks and I stayed there with Flo. Florence was writing her thesis it was stressful because that was it. It was my only chance to pass that exam and graduate with my cord because I already stretched so much my curriculum. And at the same time, everybody was looking. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the exam? Are you ready for Kansas City? Kansas City, it's tomorrow. One more time. One more time. Just I feel good. Pas trop it's at that point that I realized, you know what? It, it's been four years that I've been telling the media that story of me being the first NFL player to graduate in medicine. And that day I, I realized also that, you know what? I might not make it. I, I might fail. And, and if I do, everybody's going to know about it. It's finished. It's finished. It's finished. It's finished. It's finished. It was stressful because there was no plan B. I had to pass that exam in order to be able to graduate with my cohort. In love. It's one thing to talk about your project, your, your vision, your ambition, and, and what you want to accomplish, but once you're faced with a challenge, you, you got to be able to do it and lead by example. It, it was
was probably the most beautiful day of my life, you know, walking on the stage, seeing my mom, Flo, everybody, and saying to yourself, you did it. And that feeling was just amazing. You know, it was my vision for the past four years. I've been studying for it for the past eight. When I finally got that diploma and look at it, and I, I think I was just proud of me. It was really an amazing buzz, but at the same time, right after that, I, I grabbed a quick bike with my parents and I was on a plane back to Kansas City because the next day I was practicing with the Chiefs. Right after I graduated, my new mindset quickly became, okay, what do I want to accomplish next season? How am I going to get ready for training camp? What do I need to do in order to like work on my stuff and, and get ready for the football season? And all I could think of was don't get injured, focus on the game, get ready, and, and kind of anticipate that feeling of walking on the field in Kansas City, knowing that you're the first one to, to do it as an MD. And the reality is that we were playing the 49ers, and I barely remember that moment because all I could think of was like, what do I need to do in that game in order to protect Pat and run the football? Pressure now on Mahomes. He's in trouble. Now gets it away. Are you kidding me? And it's only after the game that we won that I look up to the stadium and I kind of took a moment for myself and that I realized, you know what? I did it. You know, that, that ultimate vision of me being the first one to graduate in medicine while still playing in the NFL was accomplished. Football is also really fragile. Last season, during the game against Jacksonville, somebody fell in my leg. And the ball in the middle of the field. Uh -oh. And I heard a crack, uh -oh. and at that point, I knew for sure my season was over. When you're starting and you get injured, you also see that as a potential risk, and it motivates you even more to do everything you can in order to get back on the field as soon as possible. And even one millimeter of joint subluxation can affect your contact forces and lead to arthritis at a younger age, and so we don't want that. Then surgery is recommended to make sure that you get the best long-term result. So it's just it's interesting talking to a doctor, you know, so usually we don't get this opportunity if somebody actually knows the anatomy. With my medical background, I think I know more than anybody else what it means. Mm. I'm just... Away we go. Ça s'est bien passé. C'est drôle de, de l'autre côté de la médaille, de l'autre côté du... Pff, non. I'm two weeks out of surgery, and all I can think of right now is how am I going to put myself in a position to go back on the field for the playoff? And, you know, right out of surgery, I start doing some upper body training, doing some range of motion, some exercise, some cardio, in order to try to stay in shape and, and give myself a chance to, to have a chance to come back for the playoff game. The only reason why you're in Kansas City is to play football. So, so when you're not able to be on the field and win game with your teammate, it's, uh, it's hard. It's really hard. And you want to do everything you can to be able to get back to that feeling. Tu ben, tu sais, tu as 15 de mes meilleurs amis qui sont ici aujourd'hui, qui sont venus pour me prêter main forte dans ce processus-là. Vraiment, ils vont arriver de là-bas. Honestly, the group of friends that came to Kansas City really represent a lot for me. And it really gave me energy throughout the whole rehab process to see them in Kansas City in October. <laughs> 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 
it was not like poor you Laurent it was more like okay we want to have fun with you we want to have a good weekend and enjoy a football game and it kind of gave me a break you know a break of focusing only on rehab and for that I say thank you because it really gave me energy and, and more focus even to go back on the field as soon as possible. You know, the thing that impresses me the most about Laurent is his ability to focus 100% on one thing, regardless of all the other things that might be going around. And we've seen that with his ability in medical school and his ability on the football field to excel, but also in all different phases, where there's the foundation, his social life, um, his romantic life, everything is to be able to really put the amount of efforts and time into that particular thing. Hey, gang! La bouffe est prête! On vient manger! Yeah, of course. Three from three. One, two, three. Awesome. Next <laughs> <laughs> round comes Tyreek Hill. He breaks one tackle with Simmons. He broke one of Jewel. He's chased by Roby and hit by Harris. After that injury, I think I realized more than ever, how privileged I am to play football. I really want to make the best out of it. I want to enjoy it. And, and there's no reason why I couldn't be the same player I was before that injury. That's what I want to do going into next season and enjoy the process, you know, enjoy the fact that I'm on the NFL football field every Sunday and, and try to make the best out of it because I, I know that football is not going to last forever. It's also a lot of sacrifice. And I want to be able to use that whole platform that the NFL offered me to speak about my vision, my goals, and what I want to give as a legacy to all those kids out there that want to chase a dream, whether it's football or any other sport, while maintaining high academic standard. Un an que j'ai pas fait de médecine euh, clinique. Puis ce soir, j'ai la chance d'aller avec Charles, qui est un de mes super bons amis. On va aller faire en chambre un chiffre d'urgence, qui est dans le fond pas mal ce que je veux faire dans la vie. During that shift at the emergency, it's a nice way to stay up to speed with my medical knowledge because I still got to do residency before I can practice. Hello, hello, hello. Salut. Sur la croix officiellement. <laughs> Bienvenue à Santa. T'as tu trouvé des euh, scrubs pour euh... J'ai des trois exercices. <laughs> What's nice with the practice in emergency medicine is that you can have an impact right now on the quality of life of a patient. Bonjour. Allez-y, les grandes respirations. Il y a une bonne entrée d'air des deux côtés. Il y a un peu de crépitement plus du côté droit, je trouvais. Puis il y avait un wheeze aussi qui était expiratoire. Okay. Ça n'a pas l'air infectieux, mais je pense que vu son âge, vu sa condition, je ferais quand même des labos sanguins de base, juste ouais. pour m'assurer qu'il n'y ait pas un auto de globule blanc, des marqueurs infectieux. If somebody has a dislocated shoulder, you can do a reduction and send the patient back home right away. Bon, on a sens. If an old lady show up in the emergency department because she fell on ice and she thinks everything is broken in her body, you can do simple exam and x-ray and reassure that it's only a sprain and you can really have an impact on her quality of life. Son pérennet n'est pas cassé, je pense pas qu'elle a cassé. Non, non, il n'est pas cassé. Bon, on a regardé toutes les images qu'on a faites, il n'y a rien de cassé. Vous avez été chanceuse. Très chanceuse parce que c'est sûr qu'elle est stressée. Parce que c'est que des cassures à son âge, c'est souvent associé avec I'm really a guy that thrive in stressful environment and that's why I enjoy so much the emergency room because in the ER you never really know what's going to step through the door and you really got to use your rational thinking in order to make the right decision that's going to improve the quality of care of the patient. At the end of the day with with everything that's been going on this off season, I know my number one job is to play football and I'm going back this year with the right mindset to go back on the field and, and get my starting job back. 
I want to win a football game. I want to be on the field with my teammate and try to help the team win as many games as possible. And also enjoy every moment of it because you don't know how long it's going to last for. As a football player in the NFL, you want to win and you want to chase it until the end. Go get that Super Bowl ring.